Hello again, it's Jake from Straightforward Emacs, and today we're going to take a look at org mode's powerful citation and footnote features to make citing super easy and convenient in your org files. On the left is an org file, and on the right is that file exported to a LaTeX generated PDF as well as an HTML website. As you can see, in the org file, I've used the org mode citation syntax, and in the exported versions, we get nicely formatted citations here and here. So let's see how to do this in your own file. The first step is to create a bibliography file. This is a bibtex file. That's B-I-B-T-E-X, as in LaTeX. So if you're confused or want more info, feel free to look up bibtex. I won't be diving too deep into the syntax, so just follow along to get started. I'm going to create a new file, so I'll just open new buffer, and I'm going to write that file to the same directory as the org file I want to do the citations in. And inside this file, we are going to add some items. Now the first item I'm going to add is a book entry. And to do a book entry, it just begins with an at book. And then we're going to make an opening curly brace, give us ourselves a little bit of space, and a closing curly brace. And then the first thing we're, that we're going to put in is the citation reference. And this is how we're going to refer to the citation. It's sort of like a shorthand. Now as an example, I'm going to create a citation for a book that I own called Better Speech. So I'll just call the citation reference Better Speech. That's a pretty easy way to refer to it. From there, we just have to add basic info about the item so that we can make a proper citation. So I'll add a comma. And then the first thing I'll do is add a title. So I'll just type title equals. And then in quotes, we can just type the title of the book, Better Speech. Once that item's done, I'll add a comma and put down the author. The author's name is Charles Henry Wolbert, so I'll just write it as last comma first. And then I'll add the year that it was uh, written. And now we're done. So all you have to do is take that file and write it as a .bib file. Now I've already made my own bibliography file as an example, just with a few more examples. So I'm not going to write it, uh, but we can just take a quick look at that file. And you can see here what a more full-fledged bib file might look like. Now that we have that set, we just need to tell our org file what our bibliography file is called. And to do that, we just need to add a bibliography item at the top of our org file, like so, hash plus bibliography. And then from there, we can just type in the file name. Mine's called bibliography.bib. And now we can begin referencing the citations from the bibliography file. So let's start by making the simplest citation that we can. Do this by writing an opening square bracket, cite, colon, at, and then the reference name from the bib file. So we call ours better underscore speech. So I'll just put that in. And then we need a closing brace. And from there, this is our first citation totally made. So with a quick export to LaTeX, we see that we have that citation right here. Now, it turns out there's a convenient command for inserting org citations. It's called org site insert. By default, it's bound to control C, control X, at. This gives a prompt for choosing citations from your bib file. So I'll just run that, control C, control X, at. And now we have a list of everything that's in our bib file. And you can see I have a few more options. So I'm going to choose uh, this one from Christopher Columbus, and I'll just hit enter. And a little tip for IV users like me, to finish your selection, run control meta J. I'm not sure what it is on other completion software uh, systems, but I'm sure you can figure that out. So control meta J. And now you see we have that citation automatically inserted from the list. Something you might want to do is customize the formatting of the citation when it's exported. There are a lot of options for this, so I won't go into all of them. I'll just show an example or two and then give you a helpful chart for choosing formats. First thing is the locator. This can come after the citation reference and allows you to add a little suffix, again, known as a locator, like a page, chapter, or volume reference. As you can see, it comes after the citation reference and is separated here by a space. So if I were to add a page locator to the citation we created earlier, I would just go right after the citation reference, put in a space, and I'll add a page range. So I'll do pp dot, and let's say pages 270 to 273. Next is the style and variant. 
These allow specific control of the formatting details like order, capitalization, including or excluding author, stuff like that. Now personally, I like to use TCF for text and caps full. It's sort of complicated and thankfully Tecosaur has created this nice little table for us that I reference frequently, which I've linked to in the description. So if you wanted to add this TCF style variant, it goes site slash style slash variant. So to add that to what we had before, I will go after the site, I'll put in a slash, I'll put in a T for the style, I'll put in another slash, and I'll put in a CF for the style variant. And then from there, it's just the regular colon, at, and then the, the, uh, the citation reference. Now just a quick note on styles and processors. Different citation processors give you different options for styling. I'm not going to go in depth, um, but for advanced users, I suggest investigating siteproc-el uh, um, and these websites links here. I'll have that in the description as well. By now, you should have the tools to get up and running with org citations. Now I'd like to give you another feature that can stand alone, but I think goes really well with citations, footnotes. They're pretty straightforward, so let's dive right in. To define a footnote, call org footnote action by default bound to control C, control X, F. So I'm back in that little heading that we had before where we were testing, and I'm just gonna write some text. And let's say at the end of this line, we wanna have a footnote. To do that, I'm gonna run org footnote action, control C, control X, F. And now what it's done is you can see it's popped us down to the bottom here to a heading titled footnotes, and it's created a link, this FN colon four. And what we'll do is we'll write the footnote text at this location. And now if we go back up to the top, you see it's added where our cursor was when we called org footnote action, it's added the other matching footnote link. So now I'll save the file, export it to LaTeX, and you can see that here we get that text that we wrote we get the one, that little one for the footnote, and it's actually even hyperlinked for us. Click that hyperlink, and down at the bottom, you see here is that footnote text that we put in down under the footnotes right here. Now, of course, it's fairly easy to combine footnotes and citations. To do that, we'll just run the two commands in tandem. So I'll do a control C, control X, F to create a footnote. And then at this footnote definition, all I need to do is run control C, control X, at, and then I can select one of these citations that I have here. There's just one last thing I want to show you before ending today's video, and that's the footnote operations. To access them, call org footnote action with the prefix argument, or run control U, control C, control X, F. This gives us the following options, which I'll explain briefly. So this is a bit confusing, but basically S reorders footnotes in the footnote section based on order of appearance in the buffer. Now this would be a weird way to leave it, but for example, in our buffer here, FN5 comes before FN1, so running S will fix that. And you can see that these are rearranged in the order of appearance in the buffer. Similarly, R will renumber footnotes in the order of appearance. So here, FN4 would become FN1 since it's the first one in the buffer. So let's verify that. I'm gonna undo the reordering and you'll see FN4 is right here. And if I find FN4 is actually the first footnote in the entire buffer. So I'll run Control U, Control C, Control X, F, and I'm gonna renumber and now, yep, FN4 just became FN1 because it's the first one in the buffer. Now most likely you'll wanna be running the capital S, which does an R and then S um, since that is the most likely operation. And we'll make things nice and organized as well. Now N does something similar, but for more wonky situations, like if your footnotes are denoted by letters, words, numbers, it'll fix all that. So here you can see four is coming after, so I'll just do a control U, C, X, F, and then I'll press N to normalize, and it'll just reorganize everything, make everything nice and clean. Now finally, D will simply delete a footnote definition and reference. So uh, I'll just do a demo right here. Let's say I have a footnote. I'll do a control U, I'll do a sorry, control C, control X, F, add a footnote, 
And let's say, oh no, I realize I don't really want this photo anymore. I'll just run Control U, C, X, F, and I'll press D to delete. And it deletes it from the footnote section. And it also deletes that reference that was up top. That's all the content I have for you today. So let's recap what we've learned. We started off by writing a bibtech.bib file to hold citation material. Then we pointed our org file to that bibliography and learned how to use the org site insert command to add citations. We also saw the basics of locators, styles, and variants. Finally, we saw org footnote action to add and operate on footnotes. This video was not meant to explain everything, but rather to help you get an idea of org mode's powerful features and hopefully get started yourself pretty easily. Now, as always, leave a like or comment if you found this video helpful. It helps me know what people like and also to spread my content to help more people. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, also feel free to leave a comment. I try to reply to all of them.